Jesus way. Throughout the reflection on the theme of GC21, we were invited to take care of the way in which we wish to follow God's calls for us in our institute today. Some ways that were echoed in the assembly were synodality and networking, as well as the way in which we choose to relate among selves and with others, the from below, from within, and from up close, more in the way of Jesus. This theme can be a space to reflect and to review our own relational dynamics within community and in ministry in order to foster the development of relationships in which we treat each other well, relationships that are more in the style of Jesus. As a text for reflection, we offer a synthesis on good treatment. We hope it can enlighten our experience and enrich our practice. You can listen to the song, Two Moto, by Cristobal Fon. First and foremost, good treatment is a particular form of relationship between people that is based on a deep sense of respect and appreciation for the dignity of each and every person. Good treatment is characterized by the use of empathy to understand and to make sense of other people's needs, effective communication in order to genuinely share needs, nonviolent conflict resolution, and an appropriate exercise of hierarchy and power in relationships. Good treatment is much more than the absence of mistreatment, and also much more than just being nice or saying please and thank you. While good, this is not enough. Good treatment is a fundamental posture of profound respect, which has to do with recognizing each person as a legitimate other with their legitimate differences, good treatment is lived and expressed in relationships. It is translated into very concrete gestures in daily life, and at the same time it must become a way of being, a way of living life. We speak of social climate to refer to the perception of the members of a group regarding the relationships in that group, what the tone, the air of the group is like. Perhaps we can feel helpless about the climate of our institutions as a whole. But we can always help to build microclimates of good treatment in our communities, in our teams in work and ministry, in our daily relationships, in the small things. We are all responsible for building microclimates of good treatment, and even more so those who hold authority in the group. In a microclimate of good treatment, people feel well treated. The microclimates of good treatment provide parameters of contrast that prevent the normalization of violence. They are also spaces in which it is possible to oxygenate, to breathe, to strengthen. When we treat someone well, from a deep respect for their being, we remind them without the need for words that they are a person worthy of respect, valuable. This can be deeply reparative. It is important to realize that we are always building a certain climate wherever we move. Whether intentionally or not, we are establishing a certain way of relating to each other. For this reason, we can each reflect and determine whether our way of establishing bonds and relationships is nourishing or toxic for good treatment. We build nurturing climates for good treatment when, for example, we discover and highlight the talents and abilities of each person, explicitly recognizing their achievements. We consider a mistake as a learning opportunity, without stigmatizing the other person. In our relationships and ways of working, we promote a common good logic in which people work with each other, generating relationships based on solidarity and trust. We try to overcome individualistic logic in which people work against each other, making trust impossible. We form open groups or teams in which we seek to integrate all members without rejecting or making some of them invisible. We show our concern for each person, making them feel part of the group without losing their own individuality. We understand the degree of power that we always have by associating it with responsibilities, not privileges. We establish relationships of authority based on respect, promoting the participation and growth of all, 
building spaces in which it is possible to disagree and think differently. We never justify mistreatment, not even as a necessary evil. We create spaces to talk and listen to each other. We favor transparent and timely communication, without secrecy or double talk, without privileged information that is only given to a few people. We consider conflicts as something natural and inherent to coexistence, not as something dangerous or harmful. We promote the direct approach to conflict and seek the participation of the group in this process. The opposite of this is to avoid conflict or to confront it violently, or to have only a few people decide what concerns everyone. If we intervene as a third party in a conflict, we do so by encouraging reflection and promoting the development of empathy and dialogue. We do not look for culprits or urge apparent reconciliations made only by willpower. We promote a relaxed atmosphere in groups and working teams where there is room for healthy humor. We laugh with other people, not at other people, and enjoy simple things. Good treatment does not cost money. It does not require heroic acts or big campaigns. We can start with small gestures. It requires, however, self-criticism, humility, and reflective capacity. And let's keep in mind that good treatment is contagious. Here are some questions that may help you reflect and then share in community. Remember to take notes and write down what you want to communicate. What strikes me most in the text? From the text, what illuminates my experience of community relationships and those in ministry? We share in community by means of the listening circle. You can listen to the song Disteya Bajo by Ain Kerm. 